interaction matrix. One of the most exciting features of the Diddy is its ability to eliminate crosstalk between triggers. And unlike other trigger boxes out there in the market that just have a number that basically creates a broadband um, a, a, a buffering of uh, interaction, the Diddy studies all of the other inputs when you're striking your pad and creates an individual envelope for each one of those triggers to help prevent cross-triggering while still getting the best dynamics and sensitivity out of each of the adjacent triggers. Luckily, most of the work is done for you. All you have to do is hit the interaction pad button, strike the pad, and now it says envelope train. Again, what this means is that all the other triggers that you have plugged into the Diddy are in, and now it's going to analyze those triggers for interaction when I strike this pad. Notice the lights blinking on the Diddy when I strike this pad. And what you are seeing is interaction that it's caught and fixed. Now, please wait a second between each strike, at least a second, so that it has enough time to look at the envelope. Um, so after you do that a few times, you can hit the button again, and the interaction is done. Now, what happened when we did that? If you go into the global screen, you will find certain values that say things like envelope duration. Envelope duration is how long the, um, the envelope is going to be applied over, um, over the pads. And this envelope duration has to do with interaction within its own pad. Meaning, if you happen to have a piezo pad that was really noisy and you, in, and you did a training, you would see this number really, really high. That may bug you because it may be so good that, it, that it's, um, uh, it takes away your ability to do fast double strokes. Sometimes you're forced into making this kind of a compromise decision because you have such a noisy trigger. But there are some things you can do because you may want to be able to have the Diddy train the, the pad and all the other pads, but you don't want it to be so draconian on the pad that you're working on. So this is what you can do. You can experiment just how much, how long you want the envelope to be by playing a drum roll and seeing if this number affects the roll. And then let's say that you wanted to move it down to 66. Then you can hold down the enter button until you see the letter L. That locks in that number. So that if I go back and train the instrument again and look at what happened, it, it's and I go to the um, whoops and I go to the screen, that 66 is locked in. It won't change when I train. But what it is still training, it's still training other things uh, like all the other pads interaction level. Now, the, interac the interaction level is a number, basically, that uh, is not programmed by training. But what it does is this. If you happen to notice that on pad 6A, you are still getting some interaction after train. You simply go to the pad 6A, and you raise this level, and that will bump up and increase the sensitivity of interaction on that pad. And then we have a threshold. Now the threshold also can be changed that makes it more sensitive if you're not happy with the results that the Diddy came up. And also we have the minimum envelope. And by lowering or raising this value, again, it just increases or decreases the sensitivity. So generally, you can leave all these numbers alone. But if you happen to have a real pesky piezo uh, um, uh, trigger that just you just can't seem to get it right, sometimes you have to play and fudge because the Diddy will successfully get rid of all the interaction, but it could be so strong that you can't buzz roll. I have found 
that when I'm using certain, let's say, some mesh heads, if I stare at the MIDI scope and I strike the pad hard, I see that there's some interaction with itself. In other words, let's say I see a 127, and then right next to it, I'll see a 40, a 20, a 10. And those are the those are um, note numbers that are also note ons that are really close to that hard hit. But my ear doesn't hear that. And I prefer to keep that interaction going on because if I do a buzz roll, all those extra notes make the buzz roll sound more like a buzz, just like a real acoustic drum. If I allow the ditty to do its thing, and if I had a piezo drum, and later when you see, when I have individual examples of these drums, you'll see that the, um, it created an envelope duration of, you know, 289. Yes, it got rid of it. Thank you, Mr. Diddy, but it's not good for doing buzz rolls. So in that case, um, as I always use a MIDI scope on my Mac or PC to see how, what I'm doing at all times, sometimes I've learned to ignore my eyes and use my ears and let some interaction happen on things like snare drums when I want to do rolls. <laughs> 